pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 113. Today I'm going to chat with Brittany from Point Firearms Instruction, talk about Beto's genius idea to get quote unquote assault rifles off the streets, and discuss Cobalt Kinetic's new business plan. I am your host, Ava Flanell. And Brittany, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ava. I'm really excited to chat with you. I know. I'm I'm super excited to have you on. From the moment that I met you, I was like, oh my God, I need to have you on my show. But we'll get into that in a second. Before we do, um, I just want to do a little quick ad read from Manicore Arms. So I don't know if you're familiar with Manicore Arms' products, but Sven makes all kinds of accessories, mostly for bull pups and including the Overwatch medium length top rail. And it's made for the Tavor. And a lot of times like these Israeli firearms are obviously like a little bit different than the ones in the U.S. So they use Israeli made optics. And as a result, when we put the U.S. optics on it, it's it kind of sits a little low. So by having this top cover, like the top rail, it actually heightens the rail by about an inch so that you don't have to strain your neck. And that is on their website for $104.95. But if you use the code GUNFUNNY15, you will get 15% off. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. So I'm laughing because before we started the show, you were saying it's been windy and I'm like, dude, it's been so windy here. <laughs> and I live like where I have my house is, it's, there's like lots of big trees. And so there's leaves like blowing everywhere. And I'm such a freaking like clean freak. I spent so much time in my yard. Like I had like beautiful flowers and, and now I'm like, I look at it and I'm just like, oh, it literally hurts my heart to look at it. And I've lived, so I've lived in my house now. This is going on year three. Uh, I've learned from previous years that like to wait till the very end to blow my leaves because I've had to blow them. I don't know, probably like four times like last fall because they just kept falling. So I'm like, I'm going to wait this time. I don't care what my house looks like at this point. <laughs> I've already come to terms. So yeah, so that's, that's my issue. That's my biggest issue today. So I guess, uh, oh, I feel you. I guess the wind can just ruin a yard in like an hour, you know, just destroy it. So well, I totally especially, feel you. especially when we just had snow and then that killed everything. So yeah, everything just looks so bad right now. We're not going to talk about it anymore because I'm getting upset. And <laughs> like I said, it's just, it's a very sensitive subject. Um, <laughs> So we met in Texas a few weeks ago and I immediately yeah. liked you from the start. I was like, wow, like I saw you on social media and like a lot of videos and I was like, wow, this girl's like a total badass. And then I was like kind of nervous to meet you in person. And then when I met you, I was like, we just, I mean, I felt like we automatically clicked and it seems like we have, you know, kind of the same views on a lot of things in the industry and stuff. So it's always nice to meet somebody who's like like-minded. I yeah. knew... I knew that you had a interesting story and I didn't want to ask you in person because I knew that I was going to have you on the show. So, and then I kind of, when uh Triarch came out with their pushing forward series, I kind of watched a little bit of that and I was like, wow, I had, I mean, if it was, I mean, it wasn't really possible to have more respect for you, but I definitely was like, wow, like hands down, like I have a lot of respect for you. So for listeners and I don't know the the full story, but what tragic event happened? <clears throat> well, gosh, this was so, it was very, very many years ago now, but, you know, I was in my early twenties and I was a bartender and I was actually working at two different bars and I was going to college full time as well. And I was one of those college kids where if I could take 18 units, I would do it mm -hmm. because I was just so motivated to like knock it out. And when this incident occurred, I remember very vividly, it was during uh, midterm week. So, of course, I'm working tons of hours and and then I have midterms on top of that. So I am just, it was one of those weeks where you're like, I'm going to sleep on Sunday. Yeah. That's when I'm going to get to go to sleep. I'm sure you can relate with that, Ava. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, there's people that would come into the bar that were regulars and there was always the guys that would come in that were the creeps mm -hmm. and the, 
the cocktail waitresses and I, you know, we knew who they were and it it was just, it, it was kind of a part of a thing. It was, it was a regular thing. And apparently one of these creeps had been stalking me for several months. And I grew up in a very small town in Iowa. So to see somebody on a regular basis and know what they drive and that kind of thing wasn't odd for me. Mm-hmm. So I had seen this guy around. I mean, I'd see him on campus sometimes and it was a community college that I went to first. So, you know, it was all kind of age groups that went there and see him at the gas station, whatever. Was this, was this guy close to your it. age? No, he was uh, significantly older than me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 15, 15 years older than me at that time. Okay. And so, yeah, I, you know, got done with the bar one night and went home. I did not live far from the bar, uh, just far enough to drive, you know, not, not close not enough, to enough to walk it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I went home and the first thing I noticed that was odd was my back gate, the little string that was kind of poking through the gate for me to pull to release the latch mm-hmm. was gone and it was pulled through. And I thought that was so weird because I was the only one that went in and out that gate. You know, it just kind of, it, kind of threw a little red flag for me, but I didn't really think much of it. I was just excited to go crash out. Mm -hmm. So go to bed and I wake up and uh, this guy had apparently broken into my home, hidden away and was waiting for me to to come home. And so, you know, I, I quickly got myself to bed and I'm sure I fell asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. And uh, yeah, I woke up and he was actually sitting on my chest. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was like a cat and mouse thing with him. He, I was definitely the mouse and he was just, just toying with me. Uh, he hit me in the face several times and I had a loaded handgun <clears throat> right next to my bed. And, you know, I was in and out of consciousness a few times and, uh, physically fighting is just so exhausting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was the most traumatic thing I've been through with another person for sure. And sure. um I there was a, there was twice in which I could have got that gun and I chose not to out of the fear that it would have made me more vulnerable because of the position I was in and the dominance that he had already established uh-huh. with uh the fight that we had been having. So I was uh, reluctant to to reach out and grab it uh, a couple of times. So I just kind of tried to stay away from it and tried to, you know, essentially distract him and stay coherent where I could continue to fight with him. Mm -hmm. And I also tried to make as much noise as I possibly could as well. So, yeah, his intentions fully. I mean, he he disclosed this after the fact that he he wanted to rape and kill me and that he had been plotting against uh, or plotting to do so for, you know, eight to ten months. Wow. Um, and he's a yeah, repeat offender, you know, in and out of jail, in and out of the system, in and out of Mexico, you know, kind of a thing. So, so how did it, how did it, it you know? end? Like, how did you eventually get help or did he leave? Yes. So I had been knocked out and I don't know how long, still to this day, I have no idea how long I was out for, but uh, I woke up and all of the lights in my room were on. And my place was just ransacked. I mean, drawers opened, the the mattress on my bed was like, you know, practically off of the bed. It, it closed, everything's on the ground. It was just ransacked. And my first thought was, where is he? You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know if he was just around the corner. Was he outside? Was, you know, where is he in another room? So first thing I needed to do is I wanted to find my phone so I could call 911. And then the second thing was obviously my firearm, if I could get to it in time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whatever this was, I mean, I literally took two crawl steps uh, on all fours along my floor and boom, there's my cell phone just staring at me. It was back in the day of the razors. Okay. So I had a razor. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I call 911 and while I'm on the, on the line, I'm trying to get to that firearm and I look and see it is not there. Wow. It's gone. So I panic and uh, I'm sure the uh, 911 dispatcher said to me probably multiple times, uh, 911, what is your emergency? You know, and it it was kind of uh, replaying over and over. And then I was able to spit out my name and my physical address 
and then the 911 dispatch let me know, hey, stay where you are. Law enforcement is already on scene. And as she was telling me that, my back door was propped open just a little bit, and there were some shoes that were kind of in the way of uh, that me closing that door. So I'm on the floor. I, sc- I scramble over, and I, as I push the, try to push the shoes out of the way, I had to open the door slightly to do so. And I looked out, and about 20 yards away facing me is this man. <clears throat> He's completely naked. And he has my gun in his hand pointed at his own head. And I did not know in that moment, but he was engaged with law enforcement, law enforcement. You know, they were, they were talking with him. There were several of them. I couldn't see them obviously. And so I just pushed those shoes out of the way and shut the door. I go tuck and hide a little bit and I stay on the line with dispatch and she continues to kind of uh, talk me through everything. And then um, they got him apprehended. He did not. He did not shoot himself. They he he gave up, and uh, they got him apprehended. And and then I proceeded forward with that. I went to the hospital, and you know that whole thing. <clears throat> I didn't realize at the time how uh, physically beat up I was until the adrenaline kind of kicked off and everything started hurting real bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's that's how that went. Uh, the beautiful thing is, and I didn't mention this, the how law enforcement arrived is. My neighbor lady, wonderful woman, still keep in touch with her. She called law enforcement because she could hear all of the screaming and the and you know just all of the noise. Mm-hmm. And she and she knew I lived alone, so she knew what what you know what's going on over there. So she just went ahead and called nine one one. And it's you know I I thank her till still to this day because you don't you know, know what could have happened. Like if, yeah, if they didn't arrive, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. She got him there quickly, which was just huge lifesaver. So, and how yeah. how far apart were was your neighbor? I mean, was she fairly close oh, by? Su- or? Super close. Okay. Yeah, and she's an older lady. She lived alone, and she had several little dogs. And those dogs would bark all the time. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, drove me nuts most of the time. But uh-huh. you know, that night, the it, they went crazy, mm-hmm. and that's what she said. She said, you know, the dogs were just going crazy, and so I had to call. You know, they were going crazy. I could hear all kinds of screaming over there. And so, you know, wow. they were her little warning signs, I guess. But yeah. So what happened to the guy? Is he, I mean, is he still in and out of jail or is he going to be there for a while? Uh, so he's in prison currently and he's, he's so, um, you know, interesting. He's just a kind of a mess and he's a product of the the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he, uh, yeah, he went to jail and then he went to prison and he's, he kind of, whenever he gets out on parole, he kind of takes off and goes to Mexico for a while. Um, and he got caught doing something, um, not that long ago and it, it got him put back in prison. So I get a call from a DA every once in a while that kind of lets me know where he's at, what's going on. And they check in with me. I, you know, people, people are good. People are inherently good. So I made some really great relationships with some folks kind of through that process and got to really see just how skewed the system is and how frustrated a lot of the folks that deal with that on a regular basis Mm -hmm. get. And so, um, you know, they kind of keep me posted on where he's at and what's going on which wow. is really great. But, uh, yeah, no, he's a, he's in, he's in right now. And so hopefully he stays there and I'll uh, maybe get beat up every once in a while. I, I know. know. Right. <laughs> How scary though. So, I mean, what went through your mind like after this happened and how did you cope with it? You know, I was such a different woman then. I was, uh, I'm just really honest with you. I was, I was embarrassed and I was ashamed and, uh, you know, I went through a really dark time just trying to uh, forgive myself for being so unprepared and, um, you know, just, I just kind of, you know, I just went through a big depression Mm -hmm. for a while about it. And, and then one day I was like, you know what? I can do something. And I, I want, and then, you know, I, I lived in fear for a while. That was yeah, another, that's component. what I would, I would imagine I 
that would be like the biggest thing is like now every time you go home, you're always thinking the worst. Oh yeah. I slept at every girlfriend's house. I like overstayed my welcome Mm -hmm. (laughs) with a lot of my friends. They would argue that, but yeah, I never wanted to be alone. And then just every time I would see somebody and I'd see them again somewhere else, like a day or two later, later, I would be like, Oh, that person, you know, I just, I lived in fear for a while. And yeah, so that's when I really decided, okay, I don't want to be a gun owner anymore. I want to go through a training process and I want to, I want to be a firearm owner that is trained well enough so that this firearm gives me more power and doesn't make me vulnerable by Mm -hmm. any means. So, um, that's when I really started seeking training. So what, I mean, but you were into guns cause obviously you owned a gun before this happened. So kind of just yeah. backtracking a little bit. Did you grow up around guns? So growing up in Iowa and I mean, I'm talking super small town. I mean, less than a hundred people in the town I grew up in. I graduated with 27 people in my class, just super small town. So <laughs> obviously lots of hunting the gun culture there is strong and healthy Mm -hmm. and so I I grew up in that culture you know I can remember several times even when I was in high school folks having shotguns and rifles you know racked in their trucks because they were going to go hunt that night or check traps or whatever they were going to do so I did grow up around guns and you know what's really interesting is in my in the town I grew up in, all of the uh, businesses have closed. There's the only two things that are there now are a bait shop and a gun store. Wow! <laughs> and I I don't know. I'm proud of that. I think it's just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, wow. I'm gonna take a quick break and talk about SB Tactical. So if anybody out there owns a Sig MPX or MCX. SB Tactical has an awesome brace for you. It's the MPX PSB and it's on their website for $199.99. That always like freaks me out. I'm like, why can't we just say 200 bucks? But, know, right? <laughs> but you don't have to, you're not going to pay a full price because if you use that code gunfunny15, you will get 15% off your entire order. Or if you just go on their website and find something else that you like and that website is sb-tactical.com. I got to, I wonder, you know, being in this situation and experiencing what you've experienced and then you see like organizations like Moms Demand Action and, you know, and it's almost like they want everyone to be unarmed, even though I just recently read some article with the the owner, I forget her name, but she was like, no, we don't really want to take your guns away. We just want to, you know, increase like laws and blah, blah, blah. And like, she really didn't know what she was talking about, but things like this, like, really upset me. And I'm usually that person who gets into like disputes on, you know, like on Facebook, if, if there's like a news article and then in the comment section, and I'm usually that one that's like always arguing. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'll even say, I'm like, honestly, as a female who lives alone, like I sleep great at night because I have tons of guns everywhere. And if I didn't Mm -hmm. like, there's like what, I mean, you can argue all day long, men and, you know, men and women are, you know, the same, but like physically we are different. And even, you know, a small guy is still going to have much more strength than most women. So what is going to be that equalizer? You know? Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And I think that a lot of these folks are just uneducated. Mm -hmm. They just aren't educated about the reason why, you know, and it seems like a lot of folks want to make So when I I checked out their website and it's quite interesting because primarily they're just talking about we're everywhere, we're doing this, we're everywhere and blah, 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 blah. I had to search on their website to find out what their mission is. Like, what is it that you're actually doing? Right. You know, because I think they just want to be kind of that siren, right? Yeah. They want to be that sizzle, you know, this is instead of, uh, of, of actually doing something. Yeah. So, and if they educated themselves, they would find that um, there's other issues in our society that are behind a lot of this evil acts that we're coming across that are unfortunately now becoming normal, mm-hmm. these, these acts of violence, right? And uh, yeah, it's really quite sad. And I wish I could have a genuine conversation mm-hmm. with these people, but it's, 
every time I've encountered anyone like that and I just try to talk to them about it, I mean, it, it immediately they take this extreme emotional state and it quickly becomes just a very convoluted conversation. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I just walk away. I can't, so I don't even engage really in yeah. that stuff anymore. I know it's yeah. frustrating. So it is. at this point you own a, your own farm training company, <clears throat> correct? Yes. And what was your, so how long have you had this and what was your main goal when you set out to open up your own training facility? Started point in 2017. So only I've had it for a couple of years now. And, you know, two main reasons I started point. First reason is I wanted to target the audience of person, people that want to obtain training, but are in are unable to take three days off and spend thousands or hundreds of dollars on ammunition to take a three day class Mm -hmm. or a five day class or even a two day class or even a one eight hour day handgun class. Mm -hmm. I just have been talking with people and I found that a lot of them struggle with, it's like, yeah, I want to get training, but I can't take a day off work and I can't spend, you know, six, $700 on ammunition for a three day handgun class or whatever the case may be. And so I'm a big believer in a little, a lot. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, and plus I'm super busy too. So I was like, let's do four to five hour classes. So just four to five hour blocks of instruction. We'll keep it pretty narrow and direct on what I'm teaching. Everything I teach is from a gunfighting mindset. And um, I try to teach my classes on like Friday evenings, Saturdays and Sundays. So it's like convenient for people to take. Mm -hmm. And so that was the main thing. I wanted to kind of target and give people something that they could fit into their schedules, essentially. Yeah, definitely. I like that. And you don't hear that as often, but I actually feel the exact same way because like the NRA, you know, courses, they're, they have to be, you know, the basic pistol has to be eight hours. And I cover yeah. all of that stuff plus more like in a four hour class. And I just think that, you know, exactly. I, I, I typically think, I think that people just automatically like their brain shuts off after so many hours. So I would wow. rather teach them like totally. the important stuff instead of I'm like, Oh, here's cartridge nomenclature. And, uh, you know, like it's, it, that's important to a degree, but like I'm not going to teach you every, you know, caliber out there. And so, yeah, I, I take the exact same approach. And I think that people definitely learn way more in a smaller amount of time than if the cat, if the class was like dragged on and we kept taking breaks and kept getting off topics and, you know, getting on like tangents Mm -hmm. and stuff. So do your students often, do your students often ask you how you got into the firearms industry? Yeah, some, some do. Sure. Uh, it's interesting because some students are like, they want to know what's your credibility, Mm -hmm. right? And then some could care less. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a 50 50. But, uh, yeah, every once in a while I get asked about it. I get the ask, you know, what's, what's your story? Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I absolutely share that with, with folks that are interested. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm a, I'm a big believer on, you know, show up, uh, show me what you can do today, you know? So like five years ago, I could maybe run a half marathon, maybe <laughs> definitely could not do that today. So I'm just that big believer in that. So. I mean, some folks are interested, some, some I don't think could could care less, really, you know? Yeah. Well, Uh, do do they ask you that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what, like, that's why I wanted to know, because a lot of times towards the end of the class, like I, you could just see like, you know, mostly men, they're looking at me and they're like, God, like, what's a girl like you like doing in this industry? And so they always ask. And I think it's because I just, I don't look like your typical instructor even like your typical gun owner, anytime I've gotten pulled over, I've never even been asked like if there's guns in the, in my motor vehicle. And I think it's just because I just don't look like that type. And right. so, you know, because I mean, the firearms industry still is very much male dominated. So uh, yeah, I get, I get asked and, you know, quite a bit. It's interesting because I hear all of this language and I'm so excited to talk to you about this because I hear all this language of, oh yeah, there's lots of new female shooters in the industry and there's, there's a whole bunch of, you know, the females are just growing and growing and it's like, okay, so yes, maybe there's, there's, you know, an influx of females in the industry, but however, they are still a small minority Mm -hmm. of the industry in a whole. 
you know, so I think we kind of, I think a lot of people kind of lose sight of that sometimes where they, they feel like there's a lot of us out there. And yes, there are, but there, we're still a small minority in Absolutely. this uh, firearms industry for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I want to talk about some of your training because we were talking and you're like, Oh, I want to train with you. And I was like, dude, I want to train with you. Like you could probably teach me way more than what I could teach you. And, and you were mentioning like, you know, like low light classes. You're like, yeah, if you turn the lights off or if, you know, you can't really see your gun, it's low light and you have to manipulate that gun. Like you're going to learn pretty quickly how to operate it. And I was kind of thinking, you know, I was like wondering like why people did low light classes and maybe it's, you know, kind of stupid on, you know, for me to not really know why, but that made perfect sense. Because I always say, I always mm-hmm. teach in my classes, like, yeah, you should be able to operate the gun with your eyes closed, but how many people actually practice that? Mm-hmm. Right. I think low light's definitely one of the aspects of training that is least trained. Uh-huh. But the folks who do it, for me anyway, my personal experience with low light was I was, I was pretty good on gun. I still have a long journey to go, though. I, I'm, you know... But I mean, I felt confident on gun during the day, during while well, the lights are on, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I took my first low light class, it really humbled me because it was like, wow, this is a whole nother dimension that I have not even touched. And so it showed me how reliant I was on my sight. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when you take that sense away, you have to rely on your other senses. Yeah. And so when I started training that low light, I became so much better on gun during the day and more confident. And, you know, I could, I could feel my gun. I could sense when I was out of ammo. I knew when my slide was locked to the rear, I could tell if I had a malfunction and, you know, in a defensive or in a gun with a gunfighting mindset, the darkness is your friend. And so also learning how to, utilize a flashlight in a way that benefits you Mm -hmm. and how to overcome if there's a a light flashing in your face is it's just it gives you so much more strength and power and yeah so low light has been the realm that I've just dove into recently in my training and uh, love it and the cool thing is I mean, we all have this in our homes, right? At night, you know, nine o'clock at night, grab a blue gun if you got one or, you know, unload and then just shut the lights off and and work your house a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's just incredible. It it really, really overflows into your your static daylight shooting. It just makes you so much better on gun. It's really great. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Same stuff goes to rifle too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, hmm, why didn't I think about that? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, in, you know, that's, those are my plans, my future plans. I also wanted to bring up something interesting that when we were in Texas talking, you were saying that you, you do teach concealed carry classes, but you don't always like to. And that's because of a law, which I guess they just recently changed a little bit, although it's still the, the wording mm-hmm. of it still sounds kind of scary, but Basically, if, you know, you gave somebody, you you signed off on them to get their concealed carry permit and then they misused the gun or, you know, didn't know what they Mm -hmm. were doing, they didn't have proper training, that it could actually fall back on you. Yes, you could be pulled in to be interviewed in regards to, you know, you're the SME here. You're the one that signed off this person on their CCW. So, Mm -hmm. and the beautiful thing is, they just did revise that. So the recent revis- uh, revisement of that current law stipulates that you cannot be held responsible for the actions of others. But on the other hand, as an instructor, you always have to be prepared to articulate, and you have to articulate well, uh, what you taught, why you taught it, and the how and why you taught the way that you taught it. Mm-hmm. So even if there are no grounds for you to be charged criminally, there is always that civil op- option for yeah. folks. So that still leaves you there. And one of the reasons I was, I'm really frustrated and struggling with it is I'm not one of those instructors that I'm just going to, Hey, you show up, you're here. Okay. And you sign off on that. You couldn't, I'm just going to sign, sign, sign. Right. I, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I can't, my moral code just does not allow me to do that. So 
Yeah, because you were saying that. that there's some people that you're like, hey, you're like, sorry, you didn't hit the target. I'm not signing. And they get really mad at you, <laughs> which yeah. which and, you have uh, my respect for yeah. because I think that, you know, you a lot of people feel like, hey, if they signed up for the class, they paid for it. There's no way that they're going to fail. Right. And, yes. And it's almost, yeah, it's the same folks who believe that a gun purchase equals proficiency. Right. Like, I bought a gun. I'm proficient with this. I took the CCW class. I am 100% qualified and certified in every aspect of this. And, you know, all of those people too, I do not just go, hey, you failed, you suck, you're out, peace. I'm always like, hey, anytime you want to get together, any of my classes that you can come to, no charge, just let me know. I'll be there. I'll help you. I can assist you to get to that level that you need to get to so that you can pass the qualification course. Mm -hmm. So I don't definitely don't leave them hanging out there to dry, but however their expectation is, I just got to show up. Yeah. Right. And unfortunately, Ava, as you know, there's people in the industry who have set that expectation for folks. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, kind of where I'm at with that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, gosh, it's just, it's never a dull moment in the farm training realm. Oh yeah. But I would just imagine, I mean, it's just, it's funny. I would just imagine they're probably like, oh, this stupid girl, you know, like they probably are just like, what does <laughs> oh, yeah. this girl know? And I, I don't know. I mean, do you like, how is it being a female in the industry? Like, do you ever experience oh. anything like that? Do students ask you questions that you're just like, really? Like, would you ask a male instructor this? Oh, yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, I've seen a lot and I'm sure I'm going to see more. And, you know, a lot of it's based off on just my personal interactions with people. But uh, I mean, some of this stuff you just can't make up. And then some of it, some of the people are really supportive and they're Mm -hmm. like, yes, this is awesome. It's awesome to see a female that's, you know, strong and smart and Mm -hmm. all the other good things they say and then and doing this. And they want people to be a good mentor for their daughters and their granddaughters Mm -hmm. and their nieces. And that's what really gets me pumped on life because I do want to be a good mentor for those girls. And I want them to know that they don't have to, you know, dress half naked. Take, uh, <laughs> yes. You know, thank you. Cause we <laughs> and, had this, cause you know, we had this talk and I was like, and that's what I said. I said, my main goal <laughs> is just to show women like, Hey, you can still be sexy and not have to show off your yeah. body to do it. And, and I, in the same thing, like people will write in all the time and they're like, Hey, really appreciate what you're doing. I love that. I can show my daughter like your pictures and you know, and you're just a good role model. And it's like, yeah, things like that. It, like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't like a woman want that? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, my grandma always used to say to me, Brittany, you'd look good in a paper bag, you yeah. know? Yeah. And that's the truth is like, if you're, if you're an attractive person and you're, you know, you got some sex appeal to you, that's going to, that's going to come out in your personality and your, your energy and how Mm -hmm. you treat people. Absolutely. So, you know, and that's what I think a lot of people are attracted to. It's Mm -hmm. not necessarily, you know, the half naked person over here. To me, that's almost like a, like a, like a freak show to me. It's like, whoa, that's awkward. Like that's got to be uncomfortable for that person. And I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, I just, I want to be a good mentor and yeah, it's been interesting being a female in the industry for sure. It's an interesting industry to be a part of. Yeah. Oh, well, and you also mentioned, you mentioned that like a lot of times they'll ask you questions that they already know the answer to just to see if you know the answer. And I had a laugh. I call it. Oh, go ahead. No, I just, I mean that, that made me laugh because I'm like, you're so, that is true. That happens to me too. Ooh. So I call those ones, I call those students or people snipes. Oh, and nice. the way I've learned to deal with them the best is because they know the answer to the question 100%. And mm-hmm. they constantly will ask you throughout the class. And so what I, what I do to them is I say, well, tell me what you think. And I'll let them, you know, I'll let them do it two or three times. And then usually the third or fourth time I go, well, tell me what you think. And then I just shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. And Usually after I say that to them one time, they realize that, that you're on to them. I get it. Uh-huh. I see you. Yeah. yeah. And just let me teach class, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, I, yeah, yeah. Those guys, those guys are interesting. I for know. Sure. <laughs> All right. And I've seen those guys do the same thing to also very prominent male instructors in the industry as well. So they do, uh, they're snipes for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. I have seen it happen to male instructors as well. Yeah. You are, you teach out of Las Vegas. So if anyone is in Las yeah. Vegas and they want to train with you, where can they find you? Okay, so point firearmsinstruction.com is our website. That's where I've got the course calendar and all of our upcoming classes. I have a low light handgun class coming up uh, October 26th. And I teach all of the classes out of Clark County Shooting Complex currently. That's where I'm at. So nice. that's where I teach out of. And then also Point has a Instagram page at Point Firearms Instruction and then my own personal page at Brittany May. Yeah. And you post some really cool stuff. So guys, go ahead and follow both of those uh, Instagram handles. And if you're in Vegas, like I would definitely, I mean, we were just talking the other day. You're like, I want to fly out and train with you. And I'm like, dude, th flights are super cheap from Vegas to Colorado. And oh, wow. um, so I'm like, yeah, we should make it happen. Because I definitely want to oh, train 100%. with you. All right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So do you have time to stick around for the rest of the show? I'd love to. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to talk about Sportsman's Guide. So right now, Sportsman's Guide, they're having a little, uh, kind of a funny little Halloween costume contest. And they basically want you to build your own Halloween costume using some of their products on their website. And then you'll upload a picture on their website or you can share it onto Instagram and just tag them in it. And, um, then you can go on their website and vote for, you know, whoever has the best costume and they're picking two winners and they will receive a $150 gift card. Both, both, uh, each winner will receive that. So kind of funny, you know, kind of in the spirit of things for Halloween. Are you dressing up for Halloween? I am. I'm going to be Miss Mia Wallace from Pulp Fiction this year. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I don't even know. I, that was a deep one. I don't even know what I'm doing. I will say that I'm not, I have, I, I like living alone. I do not hand out candy and cause it just, it freaks me out. And so I always think like, you know, it'd be the perfect opportunity for somebody to ring my doorbell. I think that there's going to be kids on the other side. And then it's like guys that like come in and, you know, like, and I think that as you get older or if you've experienced tragedy, you just kind of start developing that mindset of like, what if, and, and realize like, Hey, yeah. you know, People are always like, yeah, that happens, but it's not going to happen to me. And then you realize pretty quickly after experiencing oh, yeah. something, you're like, no, it can happen. And it's not always going to yeah. happen to other people. So I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to dress up, but I'm definitely not handing out candy. And I know that that sounds kind of mean, but I just think living alone, it's just not really a good idea. So if you guys live alone, female, if you guys are listening, I would probably, you know, tell you to maybe reconsider. All right, so now the AF segment. Stupid, funny, cool, interesting, awesome, as... Never mind. AF. So I'm sure that everyone by now has heard about, you know, Beto's plan to take assault rifles off the streets. But I have to laugh because, um, you know, they were kind of like in an interview, they were like, all right, well, how do you plan to take all of these guns off the street? And, um, and he was just like, well, you know, citizens will turn over their guns. We'll do a buyback program and, you know, and they'll follow the law. And it's like, I kind of like, as I was watching him, I'm like, where the fuck did you grow up where you think that people are <laughs> literally going to do exactly that, especially the criminals? Like, apparently you grew up in like a, you know, a world where like you don't realize like that there's, you know, bad things that happen, that people don't follow laws. And, and it just, it was like almost comical, but like just scary that this is the person that, you know, that could potentially be like, uh, you know, our president. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so a few things. So he said, he said, any law that is not followed or or flagrantly abused, there has uh, there have to be consequences, or else there is no respect for the law. Well, gee, I'm pretty sure criminals do not respect the law. I think there would be a visit by law enforcement to recover that firearm and to make sure that it is purchased, uh, brought back, so that it cannot be potentially used against somebody else. So now he wants like law enforcement to go door to door and you know try to seize these guns, which they don't have a record of everyone who owns these guns. 
And it's kind of like the red flag laws where you're relying on, you know, police to go and take these guns, but it like, it's putting police officers in an extremely dangerous situation. For sure. And I don't know a lot of law enforcement officers that would necessarily partake. Yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah. And well, and the the same thing happened here in Colorado, like the law, um, the red flag law did pass, but there is so many sheriffs in different counties and they're all refusing to enforce it. And so it really comes down to is, is the sheriff, the sheriff runs the land. So, yeah. Yeah. So I don't Mm -hmm. know. And then, um, I was reading some stuff like just commentary, like, you know, New Jersey implemented a mandatory gun buyback program in the early 1990s. And literally the state obtained 18 guns out of, they were, they estimated there's anywhere from a hundred to 300,000 firearms just within the garden state, you know, area. And they received 18. That went really well. Yeah. (laughs) And then also the biggest issue with this is like, you know, everyone keeps calling it assault weapons. And I think I told you when I, when I was flying to Texas, I sat next to a lady and she was saying, you know, she hunts, she's in favor for guns, but she's like, I think that mm-hmm. those assault things should be, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no need for that. They sh- they should definitely be banned. And I was like, assault what? And she's like, you know, the assault <laughs> guns. And I'm like, you don't even know what you're talking about, but yet this thing should be banned. And I mean, at the end of the day, like assault weapon, like what does that mean? There is, there's no clear definition. And it, and I think it's more, you know, basically largely on like cosmetic details. Like, and, and I was also telling yeah. her, I'm like, okay, so you go hunting. A lot of the, like your hunting rifles will do way more damage to a person than any AR or AK could do. It's just, it's so frustrating. Sure. And- a lot of people forget that, you know, AR-15s are, especially what uh, we have here as civilians, are primarily, they're a semi-automatic rifle. Yeah. And there are many, many other semi-automatic rifles that do and function the same way as an AR-15, but mm-hmm. don't look the same. But exactly. the, the AR-15 has this, you know, it's got this bad boy look to it, right? So the extremists have put this name assault weapon and attached it to it but uh you know that's just propaganda yeah it really is and unfortunately man people buy into that i so know easily i know and that's that's what's and, so frustrating and then, yeah and <laughs> even people think all, all the time people think that ar stands for assault rifle mm-hmm. that is another huge misconception so which it's not yeah it's... i try to just it's yeah, armalite. I try to be patient and just educate. you mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, do I don't know. You I just, me about that lady on the plane though. Yeah. I, Cause I was just so annoyed. I was like, all right, you fucked hard. What do you mean? Assault? What? Like, I'm just going to play, you know, I just played stupid <laughs> just so she could realize how stupid she sounds because she can't even explain what she thinks needs to be banned. And, um, exactly. and yeah, that's the problem is like people, I think if you're going to take a stance on something, you definitely need to educate yourself and know both sides before you think that something should be taken away. Cause it's just, it's ridiculous. Like the, the stupidity is just, I mean, if anything, alarming at best. So yes. All right. I agree. Enough about that. I'm getting heated. <laughs> uh, let's talk about <laughs> sharp bros. So John Sharps, he just posted a video last week about uh, on Instagram about the heat seeker chassis and it's for the Howa 15 mini action. And he was just kind of describing like what it comes with, what it looks like. Um, it comes with a 14 inch carbon fiber handguard. It also has an AR buffer extension, so you can put any sort of AR stock on it. It also accepts any kind of AR grip. So You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can customize the gun and put your favorite parts on there. And, uh, yeah, if you want to check out more about the chassis, go to sharpsbros.com. Q&A. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Just kidding. Visit gunfunny.com forward slash contact to submit yours. And this question is kind of dumb. This one came from Jordan. And he said, would you rather fight one human-sized duck or 20 duck-sized humans? I'm like, dude, who even thinks about this shit? 
But then I had to think about it because I'm like, well, obviously I need to come up with an answer. And I would, I have to go with, you know, probably a human sized duck, just one. I don't know. What okay. would you, that's what would you do? Because think like 20 duck sized humans, that's like a nightmare. Like, oh, I know. A nightmare. I don't even, <laughs> I would be kicking them. I don't know. Panicking, and, but one duck sized human. Okay. I mean, now, that's that like, would be kind of fun. <laughs> and, and that would be just like, like fighting another human. Yes. I mean, if they're that human size. I would this duck for sure. Right. Like, hey, man, can we talk this out over beer? Seriously, I want, a, I want a duck as a friend. And, and let's not forget, like, they can fly and like, that would be pretty cool. You know, it'd be like the dragon off of like Game of Thrones. You could, you know, hop on its back and just oh like God. fly around. Yeah, you're right. We're going about this all like the entire wrong way. We're not going to fight the duck. <laughs> we're going to befriend the duck. No, we're, and it's going to be our absolutely. pet. And we're just going to, you know, fly wherever we want. And uh Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you think. Show That's a good idea. Friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, polymer 80. So I just received a serialized uh, polymer 80 and I have, this is the first time they are now selling complete polymer 80s. Um, so if you don't want to like build your own, or I think the serialized frame is perfect for people. I know that there's been a lot of people that have voiced that they don't feel comfortable using it for self-defense if it's not serialized, which I mean, you know, yeah, maybe there's some legal repercussions, but I don't think it's really that bad. But if you are kind of paranoid about that, but you still like, you know, the palm rating, the angle of it has like a 1911 angle, I would absolutely recommend get a serialized frame and it solves all of your problems. And all you have to do is just go to polymer80.com, use the code GUNFUNNY, and that gets you 15% off. Tactic Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. So the other day I received an email from Cobalt Kinetics. And if you guys forgot about that company, they've been kind of quiet like the last like year and a half. But they're the ones that made kind of like those flashy ARs. They had the forward assist on both sides. Um, I had them on my show a while back. And, mm-hmm. you know, they were like creating something different. And uh, I don't know, but they've been quiet. And I received this email saying that they are now introducing 1911 pistols. And so I went on their website. It's not on their website. I don't know why they would send out an email but not have any more details on their website about these pistols, but I read an article and I think it was from Ammo Land. Yeah, Ammo Land. And basically they're doing away with any, like with manufacturing any rifles and they're concentrating solely on these 1911 pistols, which is kind of crazy. Like why, Mm -hmm. like, why would you put so much, you know, like blood, sweat and tears into a design and People were, you know, people were really excited about them. And then suddenly like, all right, we're going to cease all production and we're going to concentrate on 1911s, which nothing for nothing. But I mean, I feel like everyone is doing 1911s. It's like the new Glock. Like everyone's like, hey, let's customize this Glock. Like, all right, well, how are you differentiating yourself from every other company out there? And um, if you, I did, I posted a link. If you look at their link, they definitely have some pretty guns. But, you know, mm-hmm. at this point, like, I'm not just going to buy the gun because it looks good. I want to know how it's going to operate. Right. I don't know. Just so weird. So weird that they would stop. Very I would have thought that they would have just added on to, you know, to the rest of their firearms instead of just doing away with producing rifles. Right. Because there's a lot of work that goes into producing rifles. Mm-hmm. I mean, goodness. And their rifles are very flashy, mm-hmm. uh, very, very space-like. Yeah, um, absolutely. I don't know how else to describe them. They're, you know, so I'm curious to see what their 1911s are going to be like. I'm, I'm assuming that they'll fall into that same kind of flashy category. So if you, uh, I know they're pretty strong in the competition world. Yeah, so exactly. I don't know, maybe that's kind of what they're going for. Well, if you yeah. click on the link, there is, um, they do display a picture and. They are kind of interesting. Like some of them are actually really, I mean, they look really nice. But again, it's like, all right, at this point, like, cool, another 1911. Hey, cool. That's something nobody's doing, you know? 
And, uh, and I feel like looks only get you so far. I want to know how the gun's going to operate. And, and I just, again, I can't get over the fact that they're not going to be producing pistols or rifles anymore, especially because I think like things like that, they probably have reached a point where their mold and, you know, all that stuff, like the machines, like is probably now like maybe not paid off, but, you know, getting to the point where it's like pretty much profitable. So it just seems like kind of a, a weird business move. But yeah, it's extreme, right? Yeah. So this, this, this is a, I mean, it's, it's a pretty handgun. It's definitely a competition style handgun with that flag magwell and, Mm -hmm. and the way the sights and stuff are set up. So I don't know if they're just going after that, that market kind of competing with the STI, Mm -hmm. uh, competition style, um, handguns, 1911 style handguns or what, but, uh, yeah, that is a huge shift for a business. Um, cause I know they were big with those BAMP, uh, yeah. rifles and well, they're doing and, like that billet aluminum yeah. thing where and, it's very lightweight. Yeah, yeah. People were using them for, for competition. So if they wanted to stay within that competition realm, it just kind of, it makes sense just to add it onto the rest of your firearms. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's Super included. weird. It's another, yeah. Very odd. Yeah. Interesting. I'm sure that, well, maybe it'll be at SHOT Show. And we'll find out more. Or I'm sure it'll unfold as time goes by. But, yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that shot, they'll definitely have some at their booth, I would assume, for sure. Maybe with the gun bunnies. <laughs> yes, they uh, they definitely have those hand in, handing out guns so people can get their hands on them, for sure. They're oh. one of those cool. <laughs> I know. I remember that was the first time that I saw them. And I immediately was like, I don't even want to go over to their booth. Because I honestly think, you know, if you have a bunch of like half naked girls around your booth, like obviously your product isn't enough just to attract attention. You need, you know, like some TNA to bring in the audience. And I don't know. It's just, it goes against like everything and that I believe in. So I just like, I typically don't go to those booths, but yeah. And there's, there's a, there's an entire group of, uh, of, of dudes that when they go to shot, this is, that's, what they do they take photos with these girls that's like their their thing that they want to do there it's very interesting i remember i was at their booth a couple years ago and i was asking one of the girls about the forward assist on both sides because i mm-hmm. thought that was very interesting uh-huh. and uh, she was super nice but she had no idea so she directed me to one of the other guys and, and he was trying to explain it to me but yeah i mean it's you know it's it's, it's, it's sizzle it's a lot of sizzle yeah yeah <laughs> All right, time for some iTunes reviews. So guys, definitely keep those iTunes reviews coming. I greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, if you don't have access to iTunes, um, you have like an Android or something. On an iPhone, it's super easy. But you could always head on over to the Gun Funny Facebook page and leave a review there. So first review is S. Bob, five stars, corn on the cob. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm a fancy lad and I wear fancy clothes. I sit all day in the sun listening to Gun Funny eating corn. I learn a lot. (laughs) If I keep eating all this corn, I'm going to have to take some of them bar classes. Keep up the good work. (laughs) Obviously, a loyal listener if they know that I do the bar classes. (laughs) And second... that's the best. I know. Second is Benny Boom Bots, five stars, the best out there. Ava is a fantastic host. Her show has really improved with each episode. She chooses great guests, talks about inter- interesting topics, and really represents not only women in the gun industry, but the industry as a whole very well. Definitely my favorite podcast. All right. So out of those two, um, I want you to pick a winner. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. Way to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, well, I'm gonna say Benny. Boom. Bob. All right, all right, Benny. I that, the other guy though, S. Bob. I mean, wow, the uniqueness is just unsurpassed. Mm-hmm. But uh, Benny Boom Bob, I, I I can relate with that guy much more. So I'm gonna go with him. And uh, I just want to say that Bob guy, like, it'd be a lot cooler if you were eating candy corn. Just putting that out there. Yeah, more seasonal. Yeah. Do you <laughs> like candy? Cob is random. Do you like candy corn? <laughs> If you say you don't like it, we cannot be friends. Listen, I have such a sweet tooth, Ava. Like, girl, I'm down. I'm down. And I, it's a constant battle with me. I'm down for candy corn, everything. I like it all. I know, same. And I try to stay away from it. And especially this time of year, Uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's like, it's everywhere. 
Yeah. So, Actually, right before oh, yeah. I, I right just, before I did the show, I ate like a handful of candy corn because I was like, oh, I need sugar. <laughs> I need to wake up. <laughs> but yeah I and, eat candy corn with you uh, and all my friends like they think it's funny so they all like sent me bags or like I'll go to bar class and one girl found like mermaid candy corn she's like here you go and then my other girlfriend's like yeah I was at the store I got you a bag of candy corn and I'm like all right guys seriously like enough with the candy corn <laughs> but, not helping I know all right enough about candy corn because now it's just making me want some uh but we are gonna wrap up so that I can get back to that candy corn <laughs> So if you guys want to, <laughs> if you want to find me, the easiest way is just go to gunfunny.com. There's links to social media, uh, both YouTube pages, iTunes, iHeartRadio. And if you want to support the show, if you really enjoy it, consider becoming a Patreon. Literally a dollar a month will get you access to our Patreon only Facebook page. Um, it's definitely a nice community. Like if you want to make some really cool internet friends, I would definitely recommend the Patreon Facebook page because it's just... I don't know. It's, it's really a lot of fun, but there's also a lot of other different levels. If you want to support the show, Blown Deadline is also giving away a $300 gift certificate every month to a lucky Patreon. And I believe last month it was Suat who won the gift certificate. So I know he's pretty excited about that. And I just wanted to thank my editor and producer, Kenny Ortega. If you think the show sounds better, it's because of him, not me. And I also wanted to thank our $25 Patreons, Corbin Bonafide, Iraq Veteran, 8888, Ryan Morrison, Michael Alexio, Elliot and Mike Pappas. That's interesting. Uh, Joe Lyons and Charger Arms. And King of the Patreon is still Jon Snow. And he wants me to say that Einstein's original theory of relativity was if Operator Tickles bites you, your relatives will feel it. <laughs> and well you actually because you follow tickles on instagram right i love tickles uh-huh. i can't wait to meet tickles like, she's so cute the post today the little spa day thing I was yeah like, oh yeah well <laughs> i i realized that a lot of people think tickles is a boy and i'm like all right tickles is not a boy like she operates but she's also a girl all right so we need to start creating more <laughs> feminine posts so yeah that's what that was the reason, reason for that yeah <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and then lastly, I am still giving away a tag pack every month. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is just go to gunfunny.com forward slash TP, put your name, your email address. At the end of the month, I draw a lucky winner. Otherwise, if you just want to head on over to tagpack.com and get your box today, if you use the code gunfunny with your first box, you will receive a free ABKT knife. And I have one. Um, it's really nice, actually. I really like the handle on it. So, uh, yeah. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to tackpack.com. And then Brittany, I just wanted to thank you once again for making the time to join me and for, you know, telling everybody your story. Cause I know that that's not easy. And I mean, I just really, really admire what you're doing. So keep up the good work. If you could just remind listeners one more time where they can find you. Sure. Absolutely. First of all, hey, Ava, thank you. I appreciate you. I think you're just amazing. And I'm, I'm excited to be just grow a friendship with you and continue. And, you know, 30 years from now, we'll look back and we'll probably be laughing at ourselves. It'll right. be a good time. But <laughs> but we're so still going to have guns. On- okay. <laughs> no. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to be like old ladies with guns. And I'll be like, yo, Brittany, you want to do that low light, you know, training again? <laughs> Exactly. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pumped for that. So, so let's see. Okay. Point firearms instruction.com. That's my website. My okay. Instagram handle personal one is Brittany May. And um, my Instagram for point is at point firearms instruction. So easy breezy. And just spell Brittany. That's Cause it. I know, I know that there's so many oh, different ways. And so I just want to make sure yeah. people don't mess it up. It's one of those names, right? Yeah. It's B R I T T A N Y. Perfect. And I told you yeah. every time I hear the name Brittany, I think of like that movie White Chicks. And it's like, oh my God, Brittany, know. you know, and it just like <laughs> makes me laugh. That's like one of the best movies out there. Always, anytime I'm like down, I'm like, oh, I got to watch White Chicks. <laughs> I, for sure. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to go Absolutely. white. I'm going to go watch White Chicks. I'm going to eat some candy corn, drink some White Claw. <laughs> and uh yeah, it's, let's get this Monday I off. I wish I was there with you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right. On that, that note, like a great day. it does. Easy day. All right. On that note, we are out of here. Great. Thanks, Ava. <laughs> Thank you.
Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact. <laughs>